Chapter 1. The Scent of Stupidity. You're blushing. It's easy for you to read me and elicit things from me that I wouldn't present to anyone else. The redness that stains my face, however, doesn't even remotely illustrate what I feel for you, or rather what I have felt. It's easy for you to wrap me around your finger because you will always be the only one my heart beats for. There's no one else who can make me feel the way you do. It's easy for you to break me because you are the one holding my heart in the palm of your hands. Will you be there when I fall? Will you save me this time, Kiyumi? I can't believe that Crick snatched Akashi away from me again. Atsumu complains while carrying boxes of newly delivered coffee into his cozy little cafe. Okura snorts and follows him closely, carrying two boxes stacked on top of each other in his hands, as always demonstrating that he could carry more than his best friend. You need to get a grip on your brother, Tsumu-chan. He sets the boxes down in the storage room and wipes the non-existent sweat from his brow. And honestly, on Akashi kun too. Yeah yeah, Atsumu flails his hand and cuts Okura off. Fire handsome kun and kill Shrek. Noted. Okura clicks his tongue and smiles. He rolls his eyes and turns to leave the storage room to get comfortable in front of the counter. Like that's ever going to happen, Okura says while leaving the room. Akashi has too much influence on Yumiya twins. I wish Kiji-kun was at least bad at his job. Atsumu chuckles lightly as he puts the coffee away and follows Okura only seconds later. It's not too busy, so Atsumu is perfectly capable of managing the rest of today's work on his own and has given Akashi, his loyal employee, the day off. Osamu needed help with new Onijiri creations and of course, Akashi is the only one who can help him out. Just like Akashi is the only reason why Osamu still shows up at his brother's cafe. Right, not for his own twin brother Atsumu, no, but because of his employee Akashi. Funny how Akashi suddenly isn't so loyal to Atsumu anymore when it comes to Osamu. Samu could have had anyone, but nah, he picks my damn co-worker to bang. They are meant to be together. Oh, stop with that bullshit. Soulmates, Tsumu-chan. It's facts. Soulmates my ass. There is no such thing as soulmates. Okura snorts. Okay you embittered cat lady, if you say so. Okura smirks as he slumps back down on a bar stool, waiting for Atsumu to make him his favorite capoxino with a dash of caramel. Atsumu does as Okura never requested but wanted anyway and hands him the hot liquid as soon as it's done. Okura sips his coffee and does not indicate at all that Iwazumi was clearly his soulmate. Atsumu scowls and flails his arms. Yeah yeah, get yeah stupid Iwachan and be happy. But stay the hell away from me. Yeah dumb courtship makes me wanna puke. Okura raises his brows, smug grin still plastered on his face, and takes another sip. Embittered. Fuck yeah, Atsumu throws a cloth at his best friend to suffocate his shit-eating grin. He's happy for Okura. Honestly, he and Iwazumi were pining for too long already. Iwazumi returned to Japan, to Osaka of all places, starting his athletic trainer career where Okura is currently playing volleyball. It was an easy game. Iwazumi was obviously more than whipped for Okura. But all this doesn't exactly make it any better that Atsumu, who's surrounded by loverbirds, simply despises love itself. He gave up on it a long time ago and that any Alpha and Omega should be destined for each other is probably the biggest bullshit he ever heard. Soulmates? Fate? He has seen what fate could do. But that's not to say he wasn't into Okura's gossip. Is he back already? Okura hummed. Yes. He arrived yesterday and we're most likely going to meet tonight for dinner. Okura smiles but Atsumu just wriggles his eyebrows. Dinner. Huh? Maybe there will be dessert. Too. Maybe. Most likely. I'd say for sure. Atsumu smirks and Okura bites his lip. Could be. Atsumu shakes his head and laughs. Seeing how obsessed Okura is with Iwazumi is quite amusing. Now that Iwachan has finally finished his studies in America caused Okura to barely restrain himself from finally seducing that prickly alpha. The tall, slender and highly attractive Omega snuck into Atsumu's life a few years ago when he joined the MSBY Black Jackals and ventured into Osaka for a fresh start. A fresh start. Just like Atsumu. Of course, Atsumu knew Okura from high school days already. The two were considered Japan's best setters, it was inevitable that they would not know about each other. So, Okura was even more surprised when he spotted Atsumu as a barista in a small cafe near MSBY's gym and not on the volleyball court where he actually belonged. But Atsumu had his reasons for ending his volleyball career. Or rather one particular reason. Hey Iwachan will probably stop by later. I suggested your cafe to him as a must-see. Okura smiles and infects Atsumu immediately with his excitement. Yeah impossible. Kava. He could have gone anywhere. But he asked me where to get the best coffee. Atsumu blushes at that. Okura flatters him way too much. 
His coffee is good, yes, but he still has a long way to go to become the best barista in Osaka. But that was just Atsumu misjudging himself because if it was up to Okoa and every other sane human being on the planet, Atsumu's coffee clearly slayed. Not that Okoa is considered sane, though. Atsumu steered back to the actual topic. And he'll have coffee without ya. I still have practice to attend. Okoa winks and stands up, finishing his cappuccino in one go. What about the rookies? What about them? Okoa smirks. Of course. He knows Atsumu is interested to know who would join the MSBY Black Jackals and who would spend their lives in Osaka for the next couple of years. He loves gossip at least as much as Oikoa. And Oikoa isn't dense. Atsumu has a thing for volleyball players. Will they be present today? Tomorrow. Oikoa leans over the counter to cup Atsumu's face with his soft palms and places a peck on his cheek. I'm late again. Smooch Iwa-chan for me. Will you? Go smooch him yourself. You coward. Oh, Tsumu-chan. Okoa flashes him a smile. I'm sure I won't leave it at just making out today. He keeps Atsumu's face in his hands and stares into his golden eyes. Okoa beams. A rosy blush colors his face, and the pheromones he releases at the mere thought of meeting his alpha soon are heavenly. Atsumu wishes he could mix them with his own but that should remain a wish for now. Eventually, Okoa places a hasty kiss on Atsumu's forehead before breaking away from his favorite barista. You. Atsumu playfully contorts his face in disgust and basks for a while longer in Okoa's soothing scent of lavender and hibiscus. Reaching the door, Okoa blows him another kiss before leaving the cafe. Maybe you should take off those scent blockers, Okoa winks. You know, just in case a hot alpha passes by, they'll think you're a beta or even worse, that you're bonded. Fuck off already. Atsumu rolls his eyes and watches Okoa leave with a soft smile plastered on his face. The latter chuckles, but eventually disappears for practice. What a prick. Atsumu returns to work and watches the hours pass by. He is glad his tiny cafe isn't too crowded. Today is definitely one of the calmer days. He loves his cafe and he loves his job as a barista. Yes, Atsumu is proud of what he's built. He never expected that anything besides volleyball would ever bring him such joy. His cafe is small and cozy. It has a window front with various plants hanging down from the ceiling and the light is dimmed. Not too dark, but not too bright either. Pillows and blankets provide an extra comfort factor, and there's no question that Atsumu makes the best coffee all over Osaka at least according to various internet blogs and connoisseur magazines. Atsumu's cafe is a veritable hot tip. Atsumu lets his gaze roam over the place he's built and smiles faintly. He couldn't remember the last time when he was this happy. It was probably before his relationship with Sakusa Kayumi collapsed during high school. Sakusa and Atsumu met at the All Japan Youth Training Camp and were immediately enraptured by each other. It was love at first sight and it was fate that brought them together. Kayumi was the first to ever kiss Atsumu. The first boyfriend he ever had. The first, apart from his family, to ever get to savor Atsumu's scent. The first to ever taste Atsumu. Kayumi occupied a very special place in Atsumu's heart, and Atsumu thought back then that it would last forever. What a fool he had been. Everything came crashing down on Atsumu the moment Kayumi broke up with him after their final match at Nationals in their third year. Atsumu blinked once, twice, he didn't understand at all what was going on. The only thing he realized was the blur of his vision due to the tears gathering in the corner of his eyes and the sick feeling of suffocation. How his heart stopped beating because it was torn apart and how an intangible deep pain ached through his body because Kayumi used to be everything to him. Because he thought he was his soulmate. His love. His life. Atsumu couldn't have been any more naive. Everything had been just fine between them, hadn't it? Kayumi wanting to break up happened seemingly out of nowhere. Atsumu had felt numb, dizzy, and so incredibly stupid. Kayumi, of all people, had let him fall as soon as he was granted a taste of the blonde. Kayumi, whom he had trusted so deeply. Turned out the spiker was just like any other alpha, and Atsumu was just one of his trophies. Atsumu was heartbroken, and as a result, had lost his faith in love. Even worse was the fact that Atsumu didn't even enjoy playing volleyball anymore. Everything about that sport would remind him of his time with Kayumi and he couldn't stand it. His sets? They would all be meant for Kayumi's spikes. His serves? How could they still be enjoyable if he could no longer compete with Sakusa to decide who was better? Atsumu was in a slump and for a while, he didn't know how to get out of there. So, he did the only thing that even without Kayumi was still soothing his soul. While Osamu fulfilled his dream and opened up the restaurant in Ijiri Miya, Atsumu became a barista and followed his brother to Osaka, opening his own cafe Paizen Thighs. Osamu inquired if Atsumu was serious about that name, but the blonde only replied nonchalantly that he was able to bake excellent pies and he obviously had nice thighs. The name said it all. 
Osamu was just relieved the name Mia wasn't included so no one would be able to associate his restaurant with his brother's cafe. Ignoring the fact that he set out small business cards for Atsumu's cafe on top of his restaurant's counter so that his customers would stop by his brother's place after finishing their meal at Anijiri Mia. Atsumu did the same for his brother, but would they ever admit they are supporting each other? Hell, no. Atsumu sold the best coffee and pies in Osaka and started to earn a reputation. It wasn't long until he hired Akashi Kiji, who had moved to the city with his best friend Bakuto Katero to chase his own dream of becoming a mangaka. To earn some money alongside, he applied to Atsumu who immediately hired the highly talented Omega. Akashi was like a gold mean. Not only was he incredibly hardworking and accurate in what he did, but he also introduced Atsumu to the MSBY Black Jackals through his best friend Bakuto-san. It's an open secret that Atsumu has a thing for volleyball players. That's also how he met his best friend Oiko Atoru, who revealed his entire love life to him, ranting about his Iwa-chan aka Iwazumi Hajime, for whom he had been pining for way too long since childhood. Oiko and Atsumu had been in the same misery. They both sulked about particular alphas not being around them, and they were too proud to ever admit it. In addition, there were numerous other similar traits the two of them had both legendary setters, similar personalities, extremely prideful omegas, which is why they hit it off right away. In return for introducing Atsumu to some players of the MSBY Black Jackals, Atsumu promised Akashi to set him up with his brother, and oh, that was the biggest mistake of his life. Akashi would never admit he had a crush on Osamu, but the way they looked at each other and the way their sense mingled and harmonized perfectly made it clear that their feelings were mutual. The two of them are still in denial, claiming they are just friends, but Atsumu knows for a fact that Akashi already got laid several times by Osamu, and the countless bite marks and hickeys on Handsome, Kun's neck didn't come from nothing either. Atsumu wasn't stupid and Akashi was sometimes a fool if he thought that Atsumu didn't notice when his skin was adorned with new purple marks after spending the night before with his twin brother. Yeah, Atsumu is surrounded by pining idiots in love, but somehow that makes him smile too. For the first time since his high school days, Atsumu is perhaps genuinely happy because everything here in Osaka distracts him from his actual grief. Being a barista was the perfect job and getting in touch with new stupid people couldn't have been any better. Atsumu got back up, fought his way to emotional stability until Sakusa Kiyumi crashed back into his life. The little bell on the door, a mini anijiri swinging against tiny plates, jingles, and the door to Atsumu's cafe opens as new customers walk inside. Atsumu is about to greet them with a bright smile, which immediately evaporates the moment he realizes who exactly entered his small cafe. Leading the way is Iwazumi Hajime, 23, athletic trainer of the MSBY Black Jackals, followed closely by Sakusa Kiyumi, 22, still unfairly attractive, and damn did he get tall. What. The. Fuck. Atsumu drops the milk can from his hand and the sound caused by the impact of the can hitting the floor jolts Atsumu out of his stupor. He quickly bends down behind the counter so Kiyumi couldn't see him and panics over his scumbag ex-boyfriend showing up in his cafe. What. The. Actual. Fuck. Ah uh, hello. An unknown voice. It must be Iwazumi. Yeah. Jay just give me a sec. Atsumu stammers while crouching down and pressing his fist against his forehead, trying to help his brain cells to think faster about how to behave in front of his crappy ex. Atsumu's heart beats fast and hard. His whole body feels hot and he's pissed because he knows he is blushing. Maybe his buried feelings for his ex weren't so buried after all and fuck he can't be freaking blushing right now, for god's sake. He closes his eyes, shakes his head, and takes a deep breath. What did he do in his life to be punished like this? But then he thinks of all the things he did to Osamu and understands that those are exactly what he's being punished for. On the other hand, Atsumu set him up with his one and only employee Immaculate Kun, so this isn't fucking fair. Hi, Atsumu says awkwardly while getting up, brushing non-existent dust from his apricot sweater and trying to get his shit together, while still fucking blushing. What can I get ya? He gulped, visibly nervous. Oh, Atsumu would never forget that scowl and those pouty lips which would hide behind that stupidly attractive black mask and those ridiculous sexy moles above his eyebrow, and goddamn, his perfect curls falling into this shitty beautiful face, it's a fuck off at first sight. But there was something about Kiyumi. Something about the way he watched Atsumu. So, you must be Atsumu. Iwazumi continues while Atsumu and Sakusa lose themselves in a staring battle, neither willing to give up. Kiyumi's body is at least as tense as Atsumu and his eyes are wide open, obviously surprised to meet the blonde. Oiko has been talking about you a lot. Iwazumi leans in a bit closer, then murmurs more softly, thanks for taking care of that idiot while I was gone. Atsumu laughs, immediately understanding what Iwazumi is getting at. 
Don't worry, Iwazumi-kun. Kava was only half as bad as you make it out to be. That's an utter lie. They both laugh. Iwazumi is cool and debonair, and he looks even more attractive in real life than in the pictures Okua had shown him. Not his type except for his arms because fucking hell. Okua wasn't lying when he raved insatiably about them, but definitely the perfect match for his best friend. The ideal counterpart to Okua's ebullient nature and okay, Atsumu must admit. Okua and Iwazumi might be something like soulmates. Oh, Iwazumi's scent is very pleasant. A mix of pomegranate and cedar, definitely matching Okua's floral scent. Atsumu likes it. Iwazumi immediately makes him feel good. What can I get ya? Atsumu asks again, this time more confident, more easygoing. Flat white for me and for Kyo. Black coffee. Black like your fucking soul, Sakusa Kiyumi. Atsumu nods and puts on a smile that isn't serious at all, but maybe it would bug Kiyumi that he couldn't throw him off. Take a seat. Atsumu starts, his gaze back on Iwazumi, so he can suppress the lust to kill that is rising inside him. I'll bring ya drinks. Iwazumi nods, a bit confused by Atsumu's expression, and takes a seat at a table near the windows with Sakusa joining. Atsumu forces himself not to follow their every move, focusing instead on his work. He takes a deep breath. Why the hell did he of all people have to show up here? The cafe is more crowded by now, but Atsumu still keeps trying to eavesdrop on Iwazumi and Sakusa. He can't understand much, but he picks up the words America, MSBY, and Volleyball, and tries to connect the dots. Sakusa and Iwazumi must have met at college in California. Atsumu remembers Sakusa heading there after high school. As much as Atsumu tries, he can't stop himself from catching a glimpse of Sakusa, meeting his eyes every now and then. Kiyumi's gaze is intense, igniting a fire in Atsumu which should have been extinguished long ago. Atsumu's cheeks turn a soft pink the more often he meets Sakusa's eyes. He tugs his bottom lip between his teeth and returns his gaze to the coffee he is preparing for Iwazumi to stop being mesmerized by Sakusa. In an inexplicable way, Atsumu's heart beats wildly, and somehow something like hope sparks inside him. Atsumu gulps. Don't even think about it, Atsumu. Kiyumi is an asshole. So, his mind and his heart are not in harmony. Not at all, to be honest. Atsumu shuts his eyes for a moment and pushes his feelings aside. It's stupid to get his hopes up and he knows that very well. He shakes his head and puts Iwazumi's finished coffee aside so he can get to work on Sakusa's order. Black coffee? Oh. Atsumu has something in mind that would suit Kiyumi so much better. As Atsumu steps in front of the counter, Kiyumi's eyes widen for a split second. His gaze flits over those divine thighs that should be smothering him right here, right now. Atsumu wears shorts and puts his ethereal muscles on display. Fuck. Kiyumi almost forgot how attractive Atsumu is. Here, the blonde says, setting the tray down on the table. For a moment, Sakusa's gaze lingers on the patches over Atsumu's glands, relieved that Atsumu apparently doesn't yet possess any mate and that his scent is merely blocked. His body relaxes. Flat white, Atsumu serves Iwazumi his drink and then turns to Kiyumi. Fake smile now perched on his lips as he serves him his cup of coffee, and the fucker fee for ya, Omi-kun, prepared with extra love. Iwazumi frowns as he watches the two of them, startled by Atsumu's sudden rudeness and not understanding what's going on. Atsumu takes the tray back in his hands and holds it in front of his body as he continues to speak to Kiyumi. A new creation prepared just for ya. You will love it, he says sarcastically, fake smile still put on. Sakusa doesn't say anything, instead, he maintains eye contact with Atsumu, noticing that piercing into his soul makes the blonde nervous. Before the situation escalates, however, Atsumu disappears behind the counter to take care of his other guests. Kiyumi sighs while pulling off his mask. What was that? Iwazumi asks, completely perplexed. Nothing, Kiyumi replied without further explanation. Iwazumi is still confused. Sakusa contorts his face as he takes a sip, his gaze immediately snaps in Atsumu's direction. The blonde can't suppress his triumphant grin and basks in the pleasurable feeling of having won whatever competition is going on between them. This coffee is sweet as fuck. So you know each other? Iwazumi asks with raised eyebrows. Yes. Kiyumi sighs, shifting his gaze from Iwazumi to Atsumu. He's my ex. If Atsumu wants to think of a time he had felt this desperate, he'd think back to high school when his mum told him to take the chicken out of the freezer, and well, Atsumu never did. He remembered the task when his mother was about to return home and panicked because that was the only shitty task he had to do and he wasn't even able to do that. Osamu calmed him down, told him he would help him, but he never did. That bastard. 
Instead, Atsumu grabbed the dryer from the bathroom and heated the frozen chicken while Osamu looked at him in horror. How could his brother disrespect food like this? But thinking about it, desperate times called for desperate measures. The reason that Sumu is desperate right now is because his ex Sakusa Kiyumi showed up in his cafe after four years of losing track of each other. Iwazumi and Kiyumi finish their coffee after indulging in a piece of cake because of course, Atsumu's baking is impeccable and Sakusa knows that from the time they had been together. They just wanted a taste plus Oikoa raved about it too. Atsumu vows not to keep looking in their direction, yet he can't help but keep sinking back into Sakusa's dark eyes, which keep searching for him as well. Atsumu's heart pounds faster, harder, each time their gazes meet and he wouldn't like to admit how much the spark of hope flickers inside him that maybe there is still some sort of chance for them. Which is absolutely stupid. Because there's none. Atsumu is still stunned by the handsomeness Sakusa embodies and feels heat creeping up his neck, ears, and cheeks as the raven smiles at him. Asshole, the blonde whispers to himself averting, his gaze immediately. It's only seconds later as Atsumu watches Iwazumi walk outside with his phone pressed to his ear and Kiyumi standing up as well. His eyes are fixed on him, and his knees buckle as he realizes that Kiyumi is actually approaching him. Atsumu is drying some cups when Kiyumi suddenly stands in front of him, mask pulled off. The corner of his mouth lifts into a smirk and he peers down at Atsumu with a look the blonde can't decipher. There's definitely a hint of smugness in it, and Atsumu hates it. What are you staring at? Atsumu narrows his eyes and watches Kiyumi's every move down to the smallest detail. Kiyumi takes a few more steps towards Atsumu and the latter's breath hitches. His pupils dilate with Kiyumi's proximity and his heart beats fast, his mind drifting off while taking in Sakusa's scent. Oh, this familiar scent of cinnamon, cardamom, cloves, and ginger. The scent of J. Relax, honey. I'm not going to jump you. Kiyumi assures him, while Atsumu lays his eyes on him, fighting the emerging blush on his skin because of the pet name. Atsumu is somewhat relieved until Kiyumi props his palms on top of the counter to lean over with a nasty smirk plastered on his face. He adds, unless you ask me to. And Atsumu's cheeks turn to a crimson red. He's a bit startled and blinks a few times. He couldn't help but get lost in Kiyumi's appearance. However, once he regains consciousness and realizes which goddamn alpha is standing in front of him, Atsumu simply smorts. Fuck ya, yeah, he says in hushed tones but Kiyumi catches it anyway. Would you? He counters, arching a brow, and continues to smirk. Sakusa's eyes flash in amusement as he studies Atsumu's body. Wow, his ex is a pretentious dick and oh, Atsumu misses that dick. Literally. I'm surprised to see you here, Achu. Kiyumi says while slumping down on a bar stool and placing his forearms on top of the counter to slightly lean over eyeing, Atsumu to filth. Atsumu cocks his eyebrows and drops his hands to his hips, trying not to be dazed by Kiyumi's scent. What do you want? He says exhausted because a chat with his ex is clearly nothing he needs right now. Aren't you happy to see me? Atsumu barks out a laugh and replies nonchalantly, not really. Someone's cranky. Kiyumi smirks in response and raises his eyebrows at Atsumu, watching his every move. Someone needs to shut up. Why don't you make me? Kiyumi tilts his head. Oh, this is dangerous. Atsumu had expected that anything he would still feel for Kiyumi would be nothing but hatred, and yet here he's now, standing in front of him with feelings bubbling up that he shouldn't and doesn't want to allow at all. Why did you stop playing volleyball? Kiyumi asks bluntly, his expression now more serious than cocky. None of your freaking business? Atsumu snaps back because this is a sore spot and if Kiyumi is only half as smart as he always pretends to be, then he knows exactly he's on thin ice right now. He suspects it, of course he does, and he knows Atsumu too well not to realize immediately what the answer to his question is. Kiyumi averts his gaze from Atsumu and stares down at the counter. This is his fault. All of this is his fault. Atsumu. What do you want, Omi? Atsumu interrupts him, repeating his words more forcefully. You would be the actual answer but who was Kiyumi to say this? I want to talk, he says instead, frowning while his gaze drifts down to his fidgeting fingers. Atsumu scoffs. What would you still have to tell me? A few things. A lot even. Most of all, I want to apologize. He can't be fucking serious. Atsumu props his palms on top of the counter and glares down at Kiyumi, fire in his golden eyes inflamed with fury. It's not fair. It's not Kiyumi's place to come crawling back and apologize. It's not his place to stir up feelings in Atsumu that he has repressed so well. It's not his place to pretend that he is sorry for everything he has done. He can't just rush back into Atsumu's life and pretend to care how the blonde is doing. He can't pretend like he's sorry for anything he did. He can't pretend like Atsumu still means something to him. 
Please don't get me wrong. This cafe here is cute. It suits you. Seriously. But you're a setter. Atsumu. You belong on the court. Volleyball was your life. Kiyumi's gaze wanders up and he is lost in that golden pool of honey. In those gleaming eyes that hold fear, hope, and maybe even a spark of hate. He is lost in Atsumu. You were my life. Bastard. Remember when I asked for your opinion? Atsumu spits out, glaring at him bitterly. Kiyumi breathes calmly, deeply, and remains silent. The last thing he wants is for Atsumu to feel uncomfortable or uneasy. He would smell it right away if only Atsumu didn't wear those crappy scent blockers. The blonde huffs. Yeah, me neither. Atsumu. I told you it's none of your fucking business. Kiyumi. You can't just come here and expect me to talk normally to you after everything you did to me. You can't leave me and then come back and pretend everything is fine. Because it's not. Not at all. I was a setter, but that's the past. Just like you are. Atsumu swallows thickly, eyes glazing over. He has already banished Kiyumi from his life. Oh, how Atsumu wishes he could undo this one night with him. That he would have never gotten involved with him. That he would have never met him. It hurts. So, so much. Don't look at me like that. He breathes quietly, his voice shaky. Kiyumi watches him at least as pained, holding Atsumu's gaze as if he was the only one worth living for. Kiyumi frowns, reaching out to grab one of Atsumu's hands, making him flinch about the touch. Like what? He asks quietly, glancing up at Atsumu while Kiyumi's dark eyes engulf him, his scent bringing Atsumu to a haze. Like you're still in love with me. Atsumu remains silent, losing himself in Kiyumi's gaze and in his cozy scent of Jay. He's trying to calm him down by pouring his pheromones on Atsumu and for God's sake, it's working. Atsumu clicks his tongue and snatches his hand away, taking a few steps back, covering his nose with his sleeve and scowling at Kiyumi. Stop that, Atsumu hisses, wrapping his arms around his body, trying to protect himself from Kiyumi, to resist him. It's so dangerous because Kiyumi is the only one who can do this to Atsumu affect him with his scent, clouding his mind. Kiyumi is the only one Atsumu would fall for over and over again. He holds so much power over the blonde that it scares him. Atsumu is frightened of how easily and quickly he can hand over control to Kiyumi. And most of all, it's not fair. Why does it have to be Kiyumi of all people? The last thing Atsumu wants is to fall deeply in love all over again because Kiyumi wouldn't be there to catch him, to save him. After all, everything Kiyumi wants is Atsumu's body, just another taste. Atsumu. Kiyumi starts again but the blonde isn't even looking at him. It's really nice to see you again. I didn't think I would get this chance because I know how much I hurt you in the past. And that's exactly why I can't miss this chance. So, will you spare me a bit of your time and listen to me? Please? What? Now you're begging me. Atsumu's frown deepens and his heartbeat picks up speed. He feels it pounding hard in his chest, hurting him, causing a tightness like he's about to suffocate, and dazing his mind. He doesn't want to listen to Kiyumi, and at the same time, it's the only thing he wants. He's torn, so he decides to listen to his heart, hoping to get some relief. But well, his heart is a fucking masochist. Atsumu turns around and faces Kiyumi. He remains quiet and pulls a bar stool towards him to sit opposite Kiyumi, with only the counter between them. Atsumu eyes his ex-boyfriend skeptically, wearing a deep frown and putting his arms on top of the counter for support. Atsumu hunches over a little, chasing Kiyumi's scent. Too many memories flash through his mind, making him feel sick. Kiyumi clears his throat and draws his eyebrows together. He swallows thickly before being able to meet Atsumu's eyes. His gaze is intense and confident. Atsumu would always melt away. I can't stop thinking about you. Since we broke up, not a second has passed when I didn't miss you. I knew it wasn't over when I claimed that it was, but still, I had to let you go. I couldn't be that selfish and deprive you of your life. Atsumu's frown deepens. Selfish? Depriving his life? Atsumu doesn't understand, so he continues to listen closely. The time we spent together was the most precious in my life. I enjoyed every minute of it and I wish I had more time with you. Kiyumi pinches his eyebrows together and stares at his intertwined hands. He gulps, trying to get rid of the rising lump in his throat and averting his gaze from the blonde because it's incredibly hard to see Atsumu like this. Trembling. Hurt. A mess. Kiyumi's gaze snaps up. You were wonderful. Kiyumi stops and shakes his head, a faint smile dancing on his lips. You are wonderful. And seeing you here, having your own cafe, makes me really happy. I'm relieved you're doing well, Achu. I don't. Kiyumi frowns, swallowing thickly. I never wanted you to stop playing volleyball. Atsumu can't say anything to that. 
He can't tell Kayumi that he is the reason why he gave up his dream of becoming a professional volleyball player. He also can't tell him that being a barista is the only thing keeping him alive because it allows him to always keep a tiny memory of Kayumi through the aromatic coffee and the spicy scents of Che. He can't tell Kayumi how much he misses him. Because Atsumu doesn't want to admit it. I know I hurt you back then when I broke up with you and I know I acted like an asshole because I never gave you an explanation. You did, didn't you? Atsumu cuts him off and Kayumi's frown deepens. Atsumu has to pull himself together. His whole body is trembling. His heart quivers and the rising lump in his throat constricts his air. Atsumu feels heat creeping into his cheeks and eyes, all of it causing his vision to start to blur. He swallows, no longer trusting his own voice. I guess Inarizuki's defeat at nationals wasn't enough for you. Instead, you had to drag me down harder and humiliate me by breaking up with me. I never meant to hurt you. I trusted you. Atsumu interrupts him again more, tears welling up by now. He tries to blink them away, fixing his blurry gaze on Sakusa as sadness and sorrow are about to drown the flames of wrath. I trusted you because you were different, Omi. Because I thought you were different. But it turns out you were just like every other alpha, and I was so stupid and fell for you anyway. You took all my firsts, Omi, only to dump me right after. You took all my firsts too, and I couldn't have asked for anyone else to do it. Then why did you leave me? Atsumu asks bitterly, his voice shaky. His eyes are red and tears are threatening to fall. Kiyumi swallows, his gaze shifting between the golden pool of honey before him. Can you even imagine how fucking painful it was? Desperation is written all over Atsumu's face. Not one bit has he moved on from Sakusa Kiyumi. In fact, everything still hurts just as much as it did the day Kiyumi left him. Maybe even a little more. Meeting you here is fate. Kiyumi says in despair and Atsumu laughs bitterly. Actually, he can't even disagree with that. Fate had brought only bad things to Atsumu all his life, and this is certainly no exception. So maybe yeah, maybe this is indeed fate. Because fate is once again the greatest bitch on earth to Atsumu. Maybe his life is doomed after all. Or maybe Kiyumi's words are genuine. Atsumu doesn't know. It wasn't because of you, Atsumu. We didn't break up because of you, but because of me. Atsumu's gaze snaps to Kiyumi, his pupils dilated as the first tear creeps down his face. He watches him like a deer caught in headlights, unable to move an inch as his whole body trembles. Emotions overtake him and what Kiyumi just told him is honestly the last thing Atsumu needs to hear. He swallows, his breathing is shallow, pulling himself together is no longer possible. Get out, Atsumu breathes, his voice hoarse. He wishes he could forgive and forget but it isn't that easy. Kiyumi left a deep scar in his heart, of which Atsumu has long thought it could no longer bleed. Oh, how wrong he was. He is sick of feeling bitter but he can't bring himself to be blinded again. It hurts to hate Kiyumi, and it only got worse with each day. Sometimes he wishes they never met because he would rather feel nothing than the pain Sakusa still causes him. Atsumu. Leave, he says firmer, eyes averted. Was it Kiyumi's fault? Was it Atsumu's fault? Atsumu doesn't know. Kiyumi frowns and swallows thickly. He scents Atsumu, hoping it will somehow soothe him, but the comforting pheromones that reek of cloves and cinnamon only makes Atsumu's pain even worse. It's everything he wants and at the same time everything he doesn't. Kiyumi stands up and stops one last time before joining Iwazumi outside. Maybe it's not their time yet, but he's convinced he can't let Atsumu go again. His gaze was steely, determined, and full of volition. I'm not going to give up on us. And the next moment he is gone. Once again, Atsumu walks slowly into the storage room and drops his back against a shelf, tilting his head back and squinting his eyes to squeeze out his tears. He stares at the ceiling to stop the remaining tears from flowing, but this pain-induced waterfall is unstoppable. Sakusa Kiyumi is the last person Mia Atsumu ever wants to see again. And yet, at the same time, he is the only one Atsumu needs.